XP and now I'm at Z, you know? Yeah, yeah. It really does work. Very cool. Very cool. So, Paul, what do you do? I work for the Franklin County Child Support Agency. I am assistant to the assistant deputy directors of the agency, so um, handle a lot of the labor uh, relations issues, HR issues, um, dealing with our federal contracts and getting residents prepared to go before the Board of Commissioners. Wow. So have you been remote entirely here now also? Like how, how's your transition been there? Uh, my yeah, supervisor and I both have been 100% remote since mid-March. Okay. Um, the Board of Commissioners mandated that for all agencies had to cut the amount of people in each of the buildings by half. So okay. most agencies are on an AD working schedule that rotate. So they're in the office one day, off the next, back in the office the next, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, but, and that's mainly all of our caseworkers because the state platform that we use can't be taken home. So they have mm. other tasks to do that they can do remotely on their out of the office days. Okay. But for those of us that can, we are all working remotely. Okay. That makes sense. So we're trying to um, keep the social distancing uh, for the people that are in the building. They are all wearing masks all the time. Um, and currently, there's just the conversations of how do we start the reopening process. Um, for the county as a whole, we're not really looking at doing that till June. Okay. Um, but it's going to be a process of how do we start opening up and moving beyond just the essential services and start adding in all the other services. How do we safely open the courthouse? How do we safely reopen all the public access and um, still maintain proper social distancing? So those are the, really the conversations that are taking place at this time. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like I can do my job anywhere where I have an internet connection. So outside of signing tax returns, we, and we have sort of a solution even for that. Um, I don't know when our firm will go back. <laughs> it it might be a while. I'm sort of telling myself July sure. or after. So does working from home work for you? Yeah, it, and so actually when I had a child um, last February, so February 2019, and when I came back to work last summer, I was almost entirely remote then, just because it saved me time on the commute and that sort oh, of okay. thing, getting back used to working again after taking care of a newborn. So okay. this is like everyone now is back and, oh, what is this? Sure. <laughs> Did you guys get the <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Click on the video. Yeah. I don't see a video. I don't either. On the left side of the stage, I guess is that over. I don't see where the video is now. For me, it's right next to where my face is, but it's not really. Oh, oh. I can't hear it though. I think it's just the sponsor is messed up. Possibly. This is an adventure. I think we're able to walk around in this in this thing. Yeah, I think you can drag a, drag yourself around or somehow move to from room to room. But when I realize there's floors too, so it's like there's multiple. Oh yeah. Floors. Yeah, there is five floors. It says. It's very interesting how you can like preview who's at each table. 
How do you do that? Yeah. Uh, if you sort of hover your cursor over the, if you can see the table, like over each letter. Yeah. Then it has the person's name. Oh, really? Like I found one of my coworkers at a different table. Although some of them don't have their yeah, last name. Yeah, I just name. ran across one of my coworkers as well. Yeah, I'm wondering if I should hop over to the GBQ table and see what, if I'm supposed to be there or if I'm allowed to wander. I don't know how this is supposed to work. <laughs> You're welcome to wander. Go ahead. If you like to try it. Well, it was nice to meet you both. This is interesting <laughs> for sure. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. Right, I'm going to see what this All does right. if I click away. All right, we'll see you later. <laughs> Maybe if I do it wrong. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. Never mind. I don't know how to use this. Yeah, every time I grab it, it just, it just scrolls the whole screen around. Oops, I accidentally clicked on somebody. Sorry about that. <laughs> if you double click on the, uh, I think it'll join it. Oh, she figured it out. It worked. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure which table my coworker's at, but I guess she was having some technical issues, so I was just typing back she's to her gonna so she's going to gonna try to. Hello! get back in on her laptop oh, and see if that helps. Hi. Can you guys hear? My name's Julie Hillier. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you, yes. We can't see you. Yes. I'm having problems with people seeing me, which is really annoying me. <laughs> <laughs> I did my hair. I actually I took a shower, did my hair and everything today since I haven't had to do that for a while. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Camera I on. think we're all just having to get used to this new platform. Uh-huh, yeah. Are you on, can you tell me, are you on a Internet Explorer? Or are you on a um, Chrome? I had to use Chrome because when I logged on with Microsoft Edge, it had my camera rates at 9 degrees. Uh-oh. And I'm actually using Firefox, and I haven't had any issues. You are having issues. Okay, okay, okay. No, I'm not having any issues. Oh, okay. Um, what are you using right now? Are you having, some people are talking about feedback on their microphones. Are you having any feedback? You tell us. Just a little bit, but I think what they recommended is when we're not talking to mute our mic. Okay, okay, okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to try to figure out my... Friend of mine, Phil Lugrove, uh, has What's been. What's your the purpose of attending today, Paul? Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping by the end of this whole season of change and shift and uncertainty, it hasn't.
Okay. Oh, I can hear you. Fantastic. Can you hear me all right? Yep. Okay. It's that funny. I actually got dropped from my other table. I don't know what happened. <laughs> they gave me the boot, huh? <laughs> I wonder if I can get my, my camera working. Now, I don't see, uh, I don't see, I just see tiles of uh, you, myself, and then it looks like the leadership slide. Yep, I think so. Okay. I really I like this platform. This is really neat. It is. It's very cool. It almost feels like you're kind of at an event. I'm not able to see around that. Anybody got the key? There she is. My mic's on. Can you guys see me? I can't see you, but I can hear you. Okay, because I think my camera. Oh, Lord, let me cover this up. Oh, there she is. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm let it be for a second, cause like there's a part of me I haven't been on a um, I can't see myself, so I don't know what this is looking like this morning. I would say, what would Juan do? Be with friends. Have fun out there. Right? Juan do right? Be with your friends. Have fun. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Leadership Forum 2020 Leading Engagement, presented by Cover My Meds. Uh, this is Shannon Lee. I'm so excited to be here, and I'm joined here today by wonderful community members and who I am really honored to call friends. Uh, we're joined here by Elsie Johnson, founder of Zora's House. LaShondra Baker, she is the Senior Manager of Employee Engagement at Cover My Meds. And Jason Barger, author of Thermostat Culture, speaker and coach. Hey, Jason. Hey, hey. So again, I'm Shannon Lee, executive director of Relay. We're the organization basically hosting Leadership Forum this year. And this event, as you probably figured out, is something that we normally do face to face. We're normally together in a lovely banquet hall, but COVID-19 had different plans, right, everyone? Yep. And so we've all been kind of really rethinking how we do business and rethinking how we do events. And we were discussing, I don't know, it was seems like it was only about four weeks ago. Yeah. What are we going to do with this event? Because we were thinking about canceling it and decided that we would do something virtual. And then we were introduced to Platinum TDM. I want to give a shout out to Platinum TDM. You can't see them, that, but I'm looking at them. We can all see them. They're behind us here producing us this for us. Um, we are, they, they came to us with the idea to do a fireside chat. Well, we don't have a fireplace. I don't think it would meet code <laughs> if we had that in here. Jason would love us to have a fireplace. <laughs> He's chilly. Homie's it is a chilly. chilly. We do, Homie, homie's a little chilly. We do have a space heater, however. <laughs> we do have a space, space heater. heater and it's, but it's, it's six feet away. It's socially it's, distancing it's itself from away. us. Speaking of social distancing, we want everyone to know that there's only about seven of us in this room. So we're honoring the governor and Dr. Amy Acton's orders, and we're all six feet apart. And... Um, I think most of the folks, except for the camera guy, are wearing um, masks. And so we're trying to all be very careful. And oh, now he feels shamed. He's putting his mask on. He's Girl, shamed. calling him out. Dang, Gina. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So we're just going to have fun today. So our theme this year, from the very beginning, um, when we started thinking about what we wanted to do with this event, our theme was leading engagement. And then... The Rona happens. Mm -hmm. The Rona. And certainly not making light of that. It's a very serious situation. But like most of us, we're rethinking what does engagement mean in this new environment? Not just to have an event, but what does it mean for all of us at work? And the, the event today isn't just about the COVID-19 crisis. This is not what it's about. <clears throat> However, we are going to explore some of the same topics we were going to talk about around engagement, whether some of the topics were like, you know, how do we bring, how do we engage our whole selves at work yeah. when um, sometimes we might be shy doing that or, or concerned about doing that? There are different barriers to that. 
We are going to talk about what does employee engagement look like? What does engagement look like and how important is it to culture? We're going to still talk about all of those things, but we are going to also talk about what all of this means in this new environment and what are we learning right now that we want to take with us beyond this crisis, which, you know, the recovery period, and the four of us have talked about this, the recovery period is going to be extensive. And so we don't want to ignore that that's happening either. So that's going to be a part of our discussion. Do I have my slides up, gentlemen? Okay, awesome. This is all new to us. We're all learning. So let's learn together, shall we? Let's, let's shall. do it. Shall we? Right. We shall. So no, I want to tell you a little bit about our organization. Relay is a professional development organization. That's the quickest way to state what it is that we do. And what we're trying to accomplish, our big dream is to awaken the best in people so that they can positively impact not only their workplaces, but their communities, their families, and quite honestly, the world. And that's a big dream. It's a, it's a bigger dream than we can accomplish in our lifetime, which tells me that it's probably the big dream that we need to have. And the way we do this is we do this through workshops, short-term, long-term training programs, coaching, assessments. And when we're doing that, we're thinking about three things, awaken, achieve, apply. Awaken is all about helping people to awaken to what's already there. And the reason why I love the term awaken, and I think you guys could echo this, is it's, it's a call out to the fact that there's nothing wrong with you. You are complete just as you are. Some of us just need to wake up to things and, and become aware of things that were already there inside of us. And we believe that can be done through quality leadership development with an emphasis on mindset. And so we emphasize mindset strongly here at Relay, and we call that awakening. And then when we talk about achievement, that's just the nuts and bolts of leadership. Leadership models, coaching models, performance management models. So we do dive into the strategy and tactics of leadership as well and then apply, that has to do with accountability, that's where coaching sits. So everything we do fits into awaken, achieve, apply, and it's to help take leaders on a journey of really creating the mindset that they need to get the results that they want, not just at work, but in life, because we're concerned about you as a leader, as a whole person. And by the way, I wanna say this real quick before I move on. I believe that everyone's a leader, whether or not you have direct reports, whether or not you're quote unquote a traditional boss, we are all leading ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's super important to point out. So we work with leaders of all kinds, people who are leading <coughs> themselves, traditional leaders who have direct reports and so on. So now one of the coolest things about our organization, I know I'm biased, um, all of the fee for <coughs> service, uh, all of the products that we offer are actually a social enterprise. We're a nonprofit. And this social enterprise is part of our funding mechanism. And what we do is we set aside a percentage of those fees and we give them back to the community. And we do that by uh, providing free and sliding scale training and leadership development opportunities, coaching to the broader nonprofit community in Columbus. Why do we do this? Well, the average nonprofit spends about 30 bucks a person a year on leadership development. We think nonprofits should have access to the same high quality, best in class leadership development experiences as the for-profit community. And so we're trying to remove that barrier of cost by providing that. And we call that the Relay Neighborhood Leadership Initiative. And that initiative is how we make sure that that gets funded. So last year, 2019, we gave away over $55,000 in services to the nonprofit community. So we're pretty proud of that. And you know, I once heard this wise saying, it's, it's really fancy, this man said, he who doth not tooteth his own horn, his horn remaineth untooted. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Let that sink in, folks. Let that sink in. All right. So are you guys ready? I, I want to give our, sh our uh, sponsors some love right now. Yes. Let's, yes. Let's do it. I, if we had some soft... Love fest. Love fest. We would have some, some lovey-dovey music. Okay, so a special shout-out to presenting sponsor... Cover my meds. Hey! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> so, uh, Lash I'm going to talk more about how I met LaShondra in a little bit, but LaShondra Baker, our chair, agreed to be, she agreed to be the chair of this event, brought Cover My Meds in as the presenting sponsor, and through her work at Cover My Meds, her expertise and her entire career, which you're going to hear about later, she brought that thought leadership to this event and helped us not only create the original event, but reimagine this event. And so we're so grateful for Cover My Meds and LaShondra's leadership. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. And then our corporate sponsors are the Dispatch Media Group. 
Huntington National Banks and Nationwide. Woo woo! Yay! Shout out to our yes. corporate sponsors. Yes, thank you. And I know many of them are sitting in the room today. So hello. Uh, and then our patron sponsors. We have Overmeyer Hall Associates, AEP, Ohio Health, GBQ, Thompson Concrete, Vorasek Financial. And then I want to mention our annual partner. So what makes an annual partner different? Annual partners are folks that they might support us on an event by event basis, but they also have other types of support throughout the year, whether it be financial, volunteerism, thought leadership, they might serve on our board. There could be lots of different ways that they support our organization on an ongoing basis throughout the year. And so I always like to mention these annual partners because it's because of them that we're here today, too. And those folks are AEP, Fifth Third Bank, PPA, Spirit of EQ, Nationwide Insurance, Huntington National Bank, Ohio Health, Rayma Christian Center, McGowan Braybender, Insperity, and the David and Mo Muse Foundation. So shout out to all of our woo annual woo woo partners. Thank you. I'll be honest, there, there was some real concern. When, when, audience, when you see me looking this way, I'm looking at our guests. <laughs> I'm not just looking into an oblivion. I can't help it. I need to look at people. Um, I guess I'll never be a talk show host. So, well, with a live audience, I'll consider it. I'll yes. consider okay. offers. Okay. At the Apollo? At the Apollo. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> Where we'll get booed and heckled. Well, I will, for sure. Um, so there was a real concern that when we moved to a virtual event that sponsors and participants would not find value in it and maybe would not want to sponsor the event anymore. And I, am, I just want to say this about our sponsors, that I was 100% wrong. And when I put, I, I sent them a video and said, this is what we're going to do. Are you still in? 100% of them said, yes, we are in. And within 24 hours, they responded. They were so excited that we were still doing this event, that we could still offer it to the community. And it's because of their support that we were able to then make it a free event for all of our participants today. So I'm just so grateful for that and appreciate their support. Now, before we get started, I do have a few important announcements, okay? Did I skip a bunch of slides? I bet you I did. I don't know, let me see. Where are we next? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm right on cue. Who knew? <laughs> you go, girl. I'm doing better than I thought. <laughs> So far, it's an A+. Plus. It might go down. We'll see. <laughs> if it's like my uh, high school career, it will. Um, okay, so I want to remind everyone um, to mention anything you hear today on our socials. Make sure you at us. We are at Relay Leadership on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Make sure you at our speakers as well. And what do you, what do you post? Well, post a screenshot. Post a photo of what you're seeing right now, and then a quote that you're hearing, um, probably from nothing I've said so far, but <laughs> <laughs> from one of our guests, and let people know that you're here. Also, if you'd like to connect with Relay further, there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, obviously, you can join our email list. All you have to do is go to our website, RelayLeadership.com, and at the top nav, you'll see uh, something that says join email list. It's super obvious. Another way is to sign up for a Relay subscription. I'm going to talk about that later. If you're curious, in the meantime, go to our website slash subscriptions. Now, the other way you can engage with us is through our podcast. It's called The Slapcast. That was a good sound effect. I like that. It was a good sound effect. <laughs> and actually, two of our three guests have been on The Slapcast, which means, LC, you need to be the next guest. Yes, you uh -huh. need to be the next guest. Girl, yes. Yes. do it. It's happening. Yes. Now, we happening don't, people in we the don't have time to tell you why it's called The Slapcast. We have, ooh, 176 people in right now. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. Um, I don't have time to tell you all what slap means and why we call it the slap cast. You're just going to have to go listen to episode one and two, and then make sure you check out Jason and LaShondra's episode. And, and then Elsie's soon and to come. Elsie will be soon to come for sure. All right. Coming so, attractions. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Here's what's going to happen today. This is how we're going to run this show. I almost said a different word. Um, okay. Oh, the way things will work today will be as follows. All right, you're going to hear from three dynamic individuals who I'll, I briefly introduced moments ago, and I'm going to introduce them more fully um, in a moment. They're going to share for a short time. Elsie has already informed me that she's going to go over her time limit. <laughs> you already know I'm going to So the gifts we've prepared for her have been taken back. But, but, but she came on time, so that's something. She did arrive on time. But that's something. Yes, take what you can get. <laughs> Kidding. No, we're, we're, we're honored to have you here. So they're going to share for a little while, and then you're going to get to engage in a live Q&A with our speaker. Now, during that Q&A, it's going to happen three times because we have three guests. Now, we may all engage during that Q&A, but we want you to direct your questions to Elsie, but that – 
doesn't mean that Jason or Law won't, won't chime in. And when you submit questions, you're going to submit them in the chat function of the Remo platform. And as you can see, the questions will start to populate. And you don't need to wait until the Q&A portion to do that. You can start putting those questions in as each of the speakers are speaking. And what's cool is you can upvote the questions you're most interested in. And that's going to help us. Because with this many people on the platform, we're not going to get to every question. That's just the way it is. We're only going to have 15 minutes per Q&A session. But the upvoting will let us know which questions you are most interested in having answered. So if you see a question you really like and you also want to have answered, make sure you upvote it. And that's how we will know that you want us to answer that question. Now, in between each speaker, we're going to have some giveaways. Yes, we're giving away some cool stuff. Word. Some I cool like, stuff. I like free. So you will want to make sure you stay tuned for the whole broadcast so that you can potentially win something. Um, all right. I am beyond thrilled to introduce our very first guest, Elsie Johnson. Elsie is an award-winning writer, entrepreneur, and activist with passion. Uh, she loves empowering women, especially women of color. She's a dynamic, creative, and committed social justice professional. Hey. With a well-established entrepreneurial spirit, she has 10 plus years experience with curriculum development, facilitation, program design, entrepreneurship, public speaking, and community building. She currently serves as the local director of community entrepreneurship for Franklin County and is the founder of Zorus House, a co-working space and leadership incubator created by and for women of color. Super, super cool. So... She is a recognized subject matter expert whose work and writings on the topic of race and gender have appeared, get this, in places like Forbes magazine, oh, what? Oh, oh, Huffington oh, Post, oh, I, did, oh, I didn't know that, oh, 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 and Black Enterprise. What? Now, I first met Elsie almost a year and a half ago. We ended up at a retreat together. Yes, at a cabin in the woods. At a this cabin is in the no woods. Lie. And it was literally the only snowfall <laughs> we had the whole year, I think. It was a ton of snow, remember? It was yeah, beautiful. It was. It was beautiful. And um, I just want you to know, I'm a super duper introvert. And so I knew nobody other than the person who organized the retreat before I went there. And let me tell you how excited I was after I met LC. So she and I just started chatting and really yeah. hit it off. She gave me lots of great ideas for Relay that some of them we've implemented. And I knew I wanted to work with her on something, but just couldn't figure out what it was. Fast forward, LaShondra, and I think it was Jason and I, maybe it was the other Relay Shannon, mm -hmm. we were talking and we were like, who needs to fill this third speaker slot? I need, this is, what do, what do we need here? And she mentioned Elsie Johnson and immediately, am I lying? Nope, it's true I said, story. she's the one. Yep. I said, she's the one. <laughs> You're Neo. You're Neo You're in Neo. Matrix one. You are the engagement. one. Capital T, the one. capital O. So anyway, enough of me talking, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over now to Elsie Johnson. Woo! Welcome. Yay. Thank you so much. And I will ask our uh, TDL team to turn it back to the chat feature because I am going to be asking y'all to interact. Um, so thank you so much. And I will say that during that um, cabin in the woods whole situation, which was awesome, but I was the only black person there. And so I was driving there through this like remote part of Ohio. And I was literally like, I'm sorry, where are we going? Um, but I made it. Um, and now here we are. So you all get the, the, to recoup the benefits of, of that bravery that I, that I, uh, exhibited that weekend. Um, so thank you so much, Shannon. Um, as Shannon mentioned, my name is Elsie Johnson. I'm so excited to be here with all of you, um, this morning. And, you know, I want to just say that when we first started talking about this event, I started thinking to myself, uh, you know, what I wanted to talk about. A, a title came to mind pretty immediately. And the title of my talk is everything I learned about authentic engagement. I learned from Beyonce because yes. Beyonce, it really doesn't need Beyonce. a whole lot because it's Beyonce. Really right. I, that should be the whole talk. <laughs> um, but if I had to go back and adjust the title, I would say everything I learned um, about authentic engagement, I've learned from Beyonce and I've practiced during COVID. Um, so we'll start with the Beyonce piece. Now, I want to leave you because we only have 13 minutes of which I'm already planning to go over. Um, but within that time, I want to leave you with two probably of the most important lessons, I would say, from the Beyonce School of Authentic Engagement, which should be a thing. Um, and so the first lesson that I wanna leave you with is this idea of becoming a one name brand. 
Um, and so with that in mind, I want you to close your eyes for a minute and I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine for a second that you're at a cocktail party um, and you're hanging out with Beyonce because you're just cool like that. Um, and somebody comes up who's never met Beyonce before, doesn't even know who Beyonce is, know nothing, knows nothing about her, um, and you have to introduce her. And so you say, hey, so-and-so, uh, I don't know, did you meet, this is my friend Beyonce, she is blank. How would you introduce Beyonce? How would you finish that sentence and say, this is Beyonce, she is blank. Um, and so I would love for you to, in the chat feature right now, share with me, how would you introduce Beyonce? How would you finish that sentence? Um, and I will go ahead and tell you, in, when I'm typically speaking at live events, I always joke and I say I'm not actually from Ohio. Um, I'm from the South. And in the South, when we talk, we like for people to talk back to us. So <laughs> I cannot browbeat you the way I typically do with my normal <laughs> live audiences, but I still very much expect you to be in the chat and interacting with me um, if you can. So do not step away and go wash your dishes. Um, stay by your computer so that we can hang out and talk together. And I'd do love to hear, hands. do <laughs> wash your hands. Don't wash your dishes, but wash your hands. Wash your hands, for sure. Um, but I would love to hear, how would you introduce Beyonce? Um, and right now I know that like sometimes it can be a little slow to kind of get some of these. Um, but somebody was saying, you know, they're having, it's been a little fuzzy in terms of them being able to hear me. Um, Oh, a little bit fuzzy. So maybe what I should do is grab the microphone from Shannon. Cool. So can you turn this one off for me? Awesome. Is it? Yep. All right. Can you hear me a little bit better now? I heard somebody still say saying, I'm from the fuzzy. South, too. So I know yeah. that. Saying no, they're not hearing better. Still muffled. Feedback. Still muffled. All right. Okay. Well, give us a second. Like we said, we're uh, figuring this out right yeah. along with all of you guys. Uh, sounds like I'm in a tunnel. Still muffled. My husband would probably love this microphone. I think. <laughs> Take it home good, and same girl. Same. <laughs> and it same. contribute to our marital bliss. Yes. Same. 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 Yeah, the beginning was perfect. Oh, so somebody right. else says. Um, all right. Well, I took the the. Better. Okay, perfect. So we're we're a little bit better. All right. So let's feedback. let's get it let's get it popping. So Right. So okay, now. so now I have to repeat my question. Yep. And y'all already missed the story about me being the only black person in this cabin <laughs> in the woods. So <laughs> I'm not gonna go back there. Maybe we'll cover it on my podcast episode. Um <laughs> Right. So I was saying that in this this uh my question is I want you to imagine, right, that you are at a cocktail party. And you're hanging out with your friend, Beyonce, your homie, you know, your, your really cool bosom buddy, um, Beyonce. And somebody comes up to you who not only doesn't know Beyonce, but they've never even heard of Beyonce before. They have no clue who Beyonce is. And so the duty falls on you to introduce Beyonce. And I want to know, I would love for you to answer in the chat, how would you introduce Beyonce? You're going to say, this is my friend Beyonce. She's a what? What would you say? How would you introduce her? So I'm hearing some of the, one of the most popular female musical entertainments of our day. This is my friend Beyonce. She's a strong woman, mother, and wife who has dedicated much of her time, energy, and work focusing on empowering women. Ooh, Heather, I want you to introduce me, girl. Uh, Beyonce is fierce slaying queen of everything. Mm. Nice. Once again, <laughs> here's Beyonce. She's Beyonce. Um, <laughs> I love this. She's a powerhouse in the music industry. Uh, she's completely comfortable with who she is and not afraid to show it. So it's really interesting. I, there's, there's a mix going on here uh, that sometimes reflects, you know, I know you guys lost my picture for a second. I'm coming back. Don't even worry about it. Um, but one of the things that I notice is that oftentimes when we are introducing ourselves or someone is introducing us, we often lead with, what they do. So I heard a couple people say, you know, she's a singer, she's an entertainer, you know, she's a wife, she's a mother. Um, and that's pretty true to where we are in real life. Oftentimes we, we lean on, you know, what it is that we do. Um, 
And instead of leaning on that, you know, and that's because we're in professional situations. So usually if you're if you're lucky and somebody introduces you who, you know, from a professional uh, situation, they may say, hey, this is LC, you know, and they may start with my title. They may say, hey, this is LC. She's the founder of Zora's house. Or they may do like Shannon did and just read my LinkedIn profile and be like, LC, she's the founder of Zora's house and all of these <laughs> other things. Right. You know, or. You know, if you're really lucky, they may lead with your title and also add, you know, some competencies that you have. This this is LC, you guys. She's the founder of Zora's House, and she is such a good speaker, which I hope is what all of you will be saying after <laughs> this event. You know, and so they may say, this is LC. She's founder of Zora's House. She's such a good speaker, right? But what often gets lost is not just, you know, <coughs> excuse me, what we do, our titles, the things that we're good at, but who we actually are. And so what I actually want to happen is in just a second, we're going to put you back at your tables. So before all this was happening, you were at your tables with some homies. Um, and I'm going to ask you to turn on your video and I'm going to give you 30 seconds to introduce yourself to the people at your table. And you cannot say what you do and you cannot talk about your family. So you need to introduce yourself and you can't talk about your job and you can't talk about your family. And you have 30 seconds to introduce yourself. And I want you to keep it pretty close to 30 seconds um, because we are gonna bring you back here in exactly three minutes. Because just because I get to run long, y'all don't actually get to run long, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Um, so turn your cameras on and we are about to switch you back over to your tables. 30 seconds, introduce who you are, do not talk about your work um, and do not talk about your family. Go. Is there, is there anyone? Okay, Paula. Hey, Paula. How's it going? This is kind of a toughie. I don't know how I would um, describe my or introduce, I guess. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like I'm having a brain freeze. Like I'm put on the spot and I'm like, oh gosh, and then I see this bar running across the top of the screen. <laughs> thinking like um, I don't know my hobbies are pretty chill like I I read and I 
bake and I garden than I do cats. Oh, there's your kitty. Too cute. I keep seeing the the leadership thing popping up, but there's no it says it's muted. Oh, and here we go. All right, you guys, so I'll be coming back in video in just a second. Um, but in the meantime, what was that like for you? I'd love for you to chat in the um, answer in the chat. What was it like for you to do that exercise? Was it easy? Was it hard? Yeah, it was hard. Um, that was actually a bit challenging. I was horrible, <laughs> awkward and difficult, very easy. All right, before I keep reading these, um, I'm glad these are descriptions of the activity and not my speaking style. Challenging, hard, challenging, easy. Interesting, Rachel. Um, hard to not talk about family. Yes, that's real. Difficult not to mention work or family. So when I was doing this activity, I actually, somebody challenged us to do this. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest, I had a little bit more time than you all did. We had about three minutes, which I actually think made it, it both made it a little bit more difficult because you had to find more things to talk about. But what I also found was that it got easier over time. It got easier the more we started to kind of like talk and we realized, you know, we slipped up a couple times. I'd be like, yeah, I like to watch uh, cartoons with my, <gasps> not my son, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, it got easier as we started to do this. And what it made me realize is that so often we are used to coming into spaces um, when we think about authentic leadership and engagement, we're used to coming into spaces. Uh, <laughs> very challenging. We broke the rules. Lisa, come on now. <laughs> um, we're used to coming into spaces and leading with our titles, with what we do, instead of who we are. And so I'm going to challenge you now to think about what it would look like next time, even when you're in a professional setting, that you enter that space um, and you enter that space and you introduce yourself as who you are and not just what you do. And so for me, instead of saying, hey, my name is Elsie and I'm the founder of Zora's House, you know, maybe what I would say is, you know, my name is Elsie and I spend a whole lot of my time helping women and people of color figure out how they can live their best lives and do their best work. And even though that, that encompasses the work that I do, it speaks to who I am and what I care about and why I do the work that I do. And so I wanna challenge you to think about what you would say if you had to explain what you do, but you can't give your title and you can't talk about who you work for, but you just have to talk about what you do and in a way that also shows why it matters to you. Now, I've already gone on too long, but there is one more lesson that I want to share with you um, from the Beyonce School of Authentic Engagement. Um, <laughs> and that lesson actually comes from one of my favorite lines from the Beyonce song, Formation. And I wish I could play it, but I can't. I but song. for those of you who know, <laughs> Beyonce says, made all this money, but they'll never take the country out me. Got hot sauce in my bag, swag. Right. So <laughs> those of us who are uh, the scholars of Beyonce know that she was not, in fact, talking about a bottle of hot sauce in her actual purse. But we are going to go to ye days of old, a time <laughs> of innocence when we thought that that was what she was saying. Um, and we're going to pretend like Beyonce was saying that she actually carries a bottle of hot sauce in her bag. Um, what I love so much about that line is that she says, made all this money, but you'll never take the country out me. 
And in that, what she's saying is that no matter how much money I make and no matter what my leadership role is, no matter what stages I perform on, there are parts of me that will always remain. There are parts of my identity that I will never let go, no matter what spaces I'm occupying. And I think there's something about that that's so powerful. And I'm wondering if you can drop in the chat box, um, what are some parts of your identity that are non-negotiable, that even if, even if to date, you don't always find a way to bring into every space that you're in, but when you're at your best, what are some non-negotiable parts of your identity that you feel like are part of who you are? Somebody just said integrity, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. um, positivity, I love that. Passion, mm, my yeah. faith, yes. Jamie, that's a really good one because sometimes it's really hard. Uh, energy, humility and kindness, curiosity, mm -hmm. honesty. So when I thought about this, optimism, I love right. these. Um, I also thought about the fact that I've spent a big part of my career in social justice spaces where I did a lot of work around anti-racism and gender equality. And so I spent a lot of time professionally and not professionally thinking about all the ways in which it can be really hard for women and people of color to navigate this world. And yet, being a black woman is one of the parts of my identity that I adore. No matter how often I'm told that it's hard, uh, I still love it. And I feel my best self when I'm able to bring that to the table. I love when I'm able to name a, a leadership speaking engagement after Beyonce. I love being able to joke <laughs> about the fact that I'm from the South. It ain't a joke, y'all. If you meet me, I'm from the South, for real. Mm -hmm. um, but I love being able to stand true in these parts of who I am. And so I see a lot of people who are, who are bringing some of their values, risk taker, transparency, passion, gentleness, what are some some other aspects of maybe your actual your identity, whether it's, you know, other pieces for me? I'm I'm a woman. I'm black. These things are really important for me. I'm southern. Um, I'm a wife and a mother person of faith. These are things that are also really integral to who I am and they show up with me. I'm older, but I love it. Yes, Nancy, girl, tell them. <laughs> um, I love that, yeah. you know? And so one of the things that, again, I, I want to challenge you to do, and I'll say that, you know, you may encounter bias, especially when we start talking about some of these pieces of our identity that, that society tells us should be less than, you may encounter bias. And when I was a little bit younger, in my misspent youth, I used to spend a lot of time thinking about how other people would react to those aspects of my identity and what it would mean for me. Um, but in the last few years, I've realized something really important, which is that if people are biased towards or against some part of your identity, they're going to be biased whether you are wonderful or not. It really does not matter. Mm -hmm. But what does matter is that when you are able to bring those parts of yourself to the table, you will be grounded, you will be rooted, and you will be more resilient. And so I also want to challenge you in this moment to think about what that looks like. What are those parts that you are non-negotiable um, to who you are that you want to be bringing to the table? And I'll end, end by saying this. Um, I said at the very beginning of this talk, when apparently none of you could hear me, that if I could rename this talk, I would say, I learned everything I needed to know about authentic engagement from Beyonce, and I've practiced it during COVID. And that's because we are truly in an unprecedented moment where our authentic and vulnerable leadership is not just needed, um, but it is welcomed. It is welcomed in a way that it has never been welcomed before. How many of you, and I can't say show of hands, but I would love for you to just say in the chat, how many folks in the last few weeks have been on a call with a colleague and been asked, how are you? And had the opportunity to answer in a more genuine way than you normally would. How many folks have been on a call recently um, and some way or another have ended up in a conversation about their family, about what's going on in their home life, how they're navigating this with their kids and their dogs. I see a lot of yes, me, mm -hmm. hand raised, yes, several times. How many folks have had an opportunity to on a Zoom call, you know, see somebody's uh, background or their home office and learn something about a colleague and say, hey, I, I see that you got a Black Panther poster up. What's up? I love Black Panther, right? Where you've had these sneak peeks into um, 
people's real lives and real worlds. Heather said, almost every time we are on a call, I'm very direct and honest, so I answer truthfully. Don't ask me if you don't want to know. Well, Heather, that's good to know. We ain't about to ask you nothing. We don't want a real <laughs> answer to today. Um, indeed, yes, every day, yes, kids, dogs, cats. So this is a moment where we have been, whether you wanted to or not, whether you were prepared for it or not, you have been practiced. Um, in living your authentic truth and sharing in a way that I hope we'll be able to take from this moment. And in fact, I challenge you to continue to find opportunities, even when they're not, even when you're not asked to share anyway, to, to ask somebody else to find opportunities to engage in a vulnerable and authentic way um, so that even once this crisis is over, as we rebuild, we can actually take the lessons that we're learning right now about how we engage on a human to human level um, into the future. And so that is my challenge to you. I'm probably way over my time. I actually stopped looking at the timer like five minutes ago, so I have no <laughs> idea how long I've been talking. Um, but I'm going to stop now, and I would love for people to pop into Q&A. Do you have any questions about what it means to engage authentically? Um, and, you know, as you what you're going to want to do is you're going to look at the top of the chat feature and scroll to the very right. Um, you're going to see a Q&A and you can click on that and you can enter your questions. Um, and you can also vote on other people's questions, as it was said. So right now, the only question that we have was the test question of where do I put my question? <laughs> um, so please do not make me answer this and this question alone. Uh, I actually think I already answered it. So um, I would love to hear from you. What are you thinking about? Um, is Zora's house based in Columbus? It is. So Zora's house, I will share a little bit while I'm waiting for you guys to ask me some other things. Um, so Zora's house is actually a co-working space and leadership incubator created by and led by women of color. Um, and we are located in the Wyland Park neighborhood of Columbus. It opened in 2018. Um, and fun fact about Zora's house, uh, my husband and I bought a vacant lot and built it from the ground up. And we actually broke ground on the same day I gave birth to my son. So talk about multitasking <laughs> and vulnerability. Girl. That was some real multitasking right there. Um, what else? What other questions? We probably only have a couple minutes because I want to be respectful of my the other awesome speakers that you guys are going to get to hear. Um, but talk to me. What other questions do you have about authentic engagement? And, and maybe you don't have any right now, um, which is real and, and uh, relevant as well. Somebody else said, uh, I love Zora's house. Yay. Thank you. Um, perhaps share how to draw someone else to share who they really are. That's a really great question. Thank you so much. Um, one of the things that I would say about that question is, you know, model the behavior. Share who you really are first. Even if somebody asks you, what do you do, right? Because this was something that I, that I asked uh, when I was given this activity. I asked the facilitator. I would say I challenged the facilitator. I was like, yeah, okay, that's cute. But, like, if somebody literally asked me, hi, what do you do, you know, and then she told me that you can share in a way that encourages their authenticity. So instead of saying I'm the founder of Zora's House, I can say, well, I help women and people of color figure out how to live their best lives and do their best work and invite them to ask me more questions um, where I can be vulnerable. And you will be surprised that once you open up that door, other people are so willing to follow you through it. Um, somebody said, what is the most important character trait to be an entrepreneur? That's a really good question. Um, I would have to say, uh, I want to say probably confidence. Um, and I say that in confidence and a little bit of, uh, a little bit of recklessness probably. Um, you have to really and truly believe that what you're doing is, is something that is needed in the world. Um, and it has to be not just, at least for me, um, I find that my greatest, the time when I'm most engaged is, is when I'm inspired by a greater vision. So like I'm either trying to do something because I believe it's needed in the world, as with Zora's house, um, believe that it's needed in my family. Um, but I really think that like that deep conviction um, and confidence in what you're doing is really important. And I'll answer two more. Um, should your 30 second elevator pitch be different than how you describe yourself? I think that's a really good question. A lot of people have elevator pitches and I, I also want you guys to chime in if you have thoughts about this. Um, you know, I would say that both of them should be characterized by vulnerability. Both should invite people to ask you a question as opposed to definitively be like, I do this. 
<laughs> because that's not it's like, oh, right. Well, well, all right, well, I'm going to go grab some wine. Thank you. Uh, but but regardless of the actual words, it's about what do you want to happen? And really, those things should only um, kind of they may shift a little bit depending on who you're talking to. Um, but I would say that they're going to be pretty those are going to be pretty similar. Any thoughts, yeah. you guys? I, I, I would. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi, Jason. Hi. Uh, Oh, my lapel is oh, fine. Oh, oh, just kidding. All right, Sorry, good. taking the mic back. Uh, my response to the elevator uh, pitch thing would be, let your being drive your doing. Mm, I and love I, that. I st start with who it is that you, that you hope to be in the world and what are you striving to be. And then a part of that, the secondary part of that elevator speech is what you actually do, how you then are showing up in the world and what are you doing actively to try to be that person in the world. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take two more questions. Um, I'm going to take two more questions, so really quickly upvote what questions you would like to see answered. Um, right now our top two questions are what is the most rewarding part of your role and what is the most important, uh, and why Beyonce, LOL, that jumped up quick. <laughs> um, so uh, I will let you guys take a second, and I'm just going to go ahead and answer the Beyonce. So this story, you'll actually hear about this probably when you hear about the other the other uh, talks, but this is actually all Law's fault. If you want to know oh. why, why okay. Beyonce? Yeah, okay. Um, so we were having our speakers lunch preparing for this, um, and I decided to get meatloaf because that's the life I was living. And we were at Cap City, and their meatloaf is delicious. In case you haven't had it, um, and so we all started joking just about meatloaf. And Law decided to say. Well, you know, I'm gonna name my talk everything I learned about engagement. I learned from Meatloaf, <laughs> and so we were just like, "All right, challenge accepted, cool." <laughs> um, and so at that point, I really started thinking about um, who are some of the folks who have really kind of inspired me with their voice and their authenticity. Um, and Beyonce was one of the first people who came to mind. So the, although she may not be, you know, quite as thrilling like as Meatloaf or whatever, you know, I still just <laughs> felt like. Because I still feel meatloaf. like, because it's meatloaf, you know, it's classic. But <laughs> I still just felt like, you know, truly inspired by her. Um, and also, it's just really dope to see a black woman who's like, you know, who has shifted the cultural lexicon in such a powerful way. I love it. I'm really inspired by her. Um, and what is the most rewarding part of your role? Um, I would say it's it's twofold. So my journey as an entrepreneur has been really interesting. When I started Zora's House, I started it because I really was yearning for a space um, where I could connect with other women of color and and take off my own mask. So I've challenged you today to, to really step into your authenticity. And I challenge that because I know how difficult it can be. So for me, I went to a predominantly white college. Um, I work in a predominantly white office. And it's not to say that I don't have really amazing, you know, white colleagues and friends. That was actually my problem. I had nothing but white colleagues and friends. I was like, I want some other women of color in my life. And so I decided to start this, this space where I knew that if I walked in, I would see myself reflected in the art, in the books. I'd see other women of color. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with what that experience is like to consistently be maybe the only person of your race or gender at a table, um, it's exhausting. And so it was really refueling for me to have that space and to recognize that I wasn't the only one who needed it. So I think what's the most powerful about creating something based on your own need and seeing it flourish is realizing how connected our human experiences truly are. I was having this deep and profound need, and then I created this thing that drew all of these other amazing women into this space, and not just women, but allies and supporters, other people who are other than women of color who believe in the work that we're doing, and realizing that like this experience that I had that sometimes could be very lonely and alienating is in fact shared by so many others who are willing to build and co-create with me. So I think that's the perfect way for me to end when I think about authenticity. Um, when we are courageous enough to honor our identities and honor our needs and our desires um, truly, that we are then able to create um, on a level that touches people, not just around, you know, just the, the minutia of their day to day, but on a truly human level. And there's something so powerful in that. And I hope that you two are able to, um, experience that in the coming days and months and years in, in whatever professional and personal spaces that you occupy. So thank you so much. And I'm out. I'm not really out. Nice. Nice. Very nice.
amazing. So I'm going to give you my big takeaway from what you shared, Elsie. And I'd encourage you all, because this will be an encouragement to Elsie, if you could put in the chat what your big takeaway, just one thing that stood out to you. One, I'm sure there are multiple things, but if you could start putting that in the chat for Elsie to see what's your big takeaway from what she shared. My big takeaway, Elsie, is what are my non-negotiables for what I bring to every space that I fill basically. Yes. And, and I think that is a really important thing to think about. And I'm going to be pondering that for a few days. Like what are my non-negotiables of the parts of me that need to be brought to everything that I do? And, um, that no matter what I do, I will bring this, I will bring this, I will bring this. So thank you for that. Thank yeah, you for that. Awesome. That's wonderful. You. Now, before we move on to our next guest, we do have some stuff to give away. Ooh, give away. Ooh, we got yes. free stuff. Free. So you our, get hot sauce and you get hot sauce. You get hot sauce. sauce. You get hot sauce. Hot sauce. hot sauce in their bag. Swag. Swag. <laughs> um, so it's actually a 10 pack of books. And the books that we're going to give you, we're going to give you five of Jason Barger's books. What? Thermostat Cultures. Mm. And then we're going to give you five. There's a lady here that wrote a book called Servant Leader Mindset. This woman named Shannon. It's me. Woo! I wrote this book. Woo! Woo! <laughs> it's me. Yes. Um, why are we sending you five of each? Because we want you to share them with, with your team, with colleagues, with family, with friends. We want to give you a, a pack of them. Obviously, keep, keep a couple for yourself. Keep one of each for yourself. But we want to give them to you so that you can also give them away. And so what we've done, I've got some help here from Jason Otero, our community engagement manager. And he has placed all participants' names in a randomizer. He really has. He really has. There's there's some software that does this. Jason, do you have our winner? What is our winner's name? Kristen Squires. Oh, you know Kristen. Yes. Where you at, Kristen? Hi, Kristen. Is fundamental. That's right, fundamental. Um. Kristen, congratulations. What we're going to do is we're going to read. We also have your email because you registered. So we're going to reach out to you by email, get your mailing address. Don't worry. We'll make sure that we disinfect and pack the books with gloves so that you're getting COVID free materials. <laughs> um, can it, can it even live on a book for very long? I don't even know. Oh, no, I, I think know. it's like only like a... Let's, let's not play that game. Let's not go we'll just make sure that they're Libby. clean. Columbus Metropolitan Library. Yes. Oh, Kristen Squires, you're here. Yes. Yay! Yay! Congratulations, Kristen. Yay! All right, so we'll... we'll We'll reach out to you. Actually, Jason, we'll reach out to you, Kristen, and uh, we'll get that information from you and get those off to you. Okay. So uh, building on Elsie's theme uh, on engagement, authentic engagement, we're going to turn now to LaShondra. I'm thrilled for all of you to meet her. I actually wish everybody could know you personally. Oh, that's so sweet. I do Thank because you. you're just you're just one of those really special people. And I'm going to tell people what I said to you when I first met you. It's a little embarrassing, but I don't care. I'm going to be vulnerable, Elsie. Do it. Um, Do it. So first, first the LinkedIn profile. So uh, La is an award-winning communicator, four-time TEDx performer. She is very active in the community, volunteers for Experience Columbus and also through Cover My Meds, through their volunteer yep. opportunities. She's the founder of LBB and Edutainment LLC, yeah. a consulting agency that seeks to help people become better storytellers through communication strategy, event marketing, focused on networking and personal branding. And trust me, she is a pro at all of that. Oh, Law, you. you know, that's as if that wasn't enough to do. Um, <laughs> she's also uh, the senior manager of employee engagement at Cover My Medge, which is part of the talent management team responsible for creating world-class employee experiences from entry to exit. In your free time, free. Law, you say that you like to experience new yes. cultures, vacationing, drinking craft cocktails. Craft cocktails. <laughs> yes. That's yes. Right. And creating innovative <laughs> projects with her husband, Brian, and daughter, Ajoli. Did I say her name? Ajoli. That Ajoli. is perfect, yes. And, and she is a beautiful soul, by the way. Um, I met you last year at an event where you were a speaker. Mm -hmm. I was in the audience. And I'm not kidding. I went up to you afterwards. I think it was something like this. You were electrifying. I want to know you. <laughs> <laughs> And then she slipped me a 20. That's right. Because <laughs> yeah, nice. she forgot to say that. But I, that's I, right. just, I, I just had to know you. So 
Uh, and you guys are going to find, everyone's going to find out why here in, in a moment. They're Thank already you. in the chat They're, talking aww. about how Law is a baller. Oh, the oh are they saying <laughs> that? They can't, that you were awesome on the podcast aww. and they can't say enough good things about Thank you. You were awesome you. on the podcast. The podcast was so much fun. It was oh my so gosh. much fun. Thank you. So, um, so we did meet. We got together for drinks and appetizers. Yes. And um, actually, this event, although it was on our calendar, I wasn't thinking in terms of LaShondra being involved in that event at all. I just wanted to know her. Mm -hmm. It was after that that we started formulating our themes for this year and what we want to do for this event. And I was like, wait a second. This person would be perfect to chair this event. Like, when you meet LaShondra and, well, I don't want to open this up because you, all you'd be doing is tours. But she took me on a tour of Cover My Meds. And I'm telling you what, she is the cat's meow at Cover My Meds. Everywhere we walked, we were the stars. Oh, because I was with her. And so <laughs> it was so much fun. Um, it's been a blast getting to know you. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for what you brought to this event. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't, I think I need to stop talking and just turn it over to you. Everybody, La Baker. Thank you. Oh, gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Shannon. Can everyone hear me okay? Is, is this all right? Because I have such a big mouth and this mic. Is, okay, perfect. Yeah, yes. I got you. Yes, you honey. Do you want me to yes. do it for you? Oh, girl, because, you know, she's saying because I have these progressive lenses, y'all, because, you know, as I get older, I'm also, I think somebody, Nancy said she looks older and she loves it. I love it too, honey. But these eyes, girl, these eyes. Um, I am so excited to be here with all of you online and, and this distinguished group here on this stage that is six feet apart from each other because we're, we're doing the right thing. Thank you, DeWine, wine with DeWine. I wish I had some wine right now or an Irish coffee or something, you know. We need to work on that. Um, I'm honored and thrilled to be a part of this event and to be um, a part of Cover My Meds as a presenting sponsor. Um, Elsie kind of, she talked a little bit about, you know, our, our lunch and how we came up with this concept of, of everything I learned about engagement, I learned from meatloaf, because, I mean, it's meatloaf, right? And I'm also Southern, I'm from Georgia, so, you know, we, we, that's how we do things in the South. Yeah. We, we put everything in a pot and we cook it and it's good. And um, the meatloaf thing was really fun, but it was a cool idea because then I started thinking really about it because um, meatloaf is one of those dishes that you probably have fond memories of, right? When you think about your, your mom or your grandma or somebody that made it, it's very personal to you. You think about whether you use certain spices, if it's a little spicier or you know, a little pepper, a little salt, um, if you put barbecue sauce on it versus ketchup, like what did you do to make it like that thing? And I always think about engagement that same way. It's very personal. It's very individualized. And when you present yourself, you know, we were talking about authenticity in the beginning, so thank you for that, Elsie, that was amazing. You present yourself and you wanna be seen and you wanna be heard and you wanna be valued and you wanna be respected and you wanna be supported. And that's what engagement is about, it's emotional. When you feel connected to the work that you do to the people that you do it with, to the company that you do it for, it is powerful and it creates magic. And I think about, we have about 1400 people uh, that are leaders growing, developing, creating the culture and business of Cover My Meds. And we do, like Shannon mentioned earlier, we do think of all of them as leaders and leaders is not just about a title that you hold, it's actions that you take. It's wanting things to be better for yourself, but for the people you serve, you know. We're in the healthcare business, and no one goes to healthcare like Disney World, right? No one goes, because it's fun, because it's not fun. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Healthcare, you feel bad. You don't feel good in your, your spirit, your body, your mind. Any, something is not going well, and you're vulnerable, and you're anxious, and you're scared. So when we think about our mission, which is to help patients get the medication they need to live healthy lives, we take it very seriously and it's much bigger than any of us. It's a bigger thing to be a part of that. And we want people to feel better about themselves. Um, I use this slide because these are our employees who make the culture what it is. It's those folks who engage in the work every single day and they live our values. I mean, we talk about our values from day one. I do new higher, new, um, higher orientation. And from day one, we tell people they're cultural ambassadors for our company. Mm. And they live these core values in every interaction that we do. 
from our patients to our teams to each other and it becomes ingrained in us. And you know, embrace challenges and be yourself are two of our, I call our top two values because like LC said, well, authenticity, you have to 100% be yourself. You have to embrace who you are and people have to understand who you are and how you present yourself. We embrace challenges all the time all every single day i'll tell you this a couple weeks ago is really funny because for our new hire orientation when we figured out we were going to start doing it we were going to do it virtually in this covid 19 that meant the same way they come into our offices and experience our culture we had to create that online and that was no easy task that was a, a big deal so we had to do cultural things as well as make sure they had the equipment and things that they need so we had a little snafu in how we uploaded uh, the addresses to send shipments out. And so people's names and addresses got mixed up. So that's fun because you're FedExing all these things. And so we had to mobilize and be like, okay, we need to solve this problem. So we got FedEx to hold shipments at locations around this city. And I went and picked them all up. And then we repackaged them all. And another one of my, Mara, shout out to Mara Ferguson. We put it together and we hand delivered packages safely mind you gloves and masks but we delivered it to our people because we needed them to start in the right way wow and that was a big embrace challenges for us and maybe some people would not have done that but it was important for us your first experience needed to be the right experience so we had to do the right thing and make sure people got what they needed and that's engagement for me personally i take on that helm and i say this is what i need to do and I'm a firm believer in be the change you want to see in the world, right? I, if I'm going to ask somebody else to do something, I better do it first. And so that vulnerability as a leader, you have to do that. And those things matter to us, and it matters to me. It is one of the best places I've ever worked, and we talk about it all the time. We want to be a best place to work and grow for people. And it is the people that make it that way. You know, I, I'm honored to work with the amazing teams that I work with. You know, on our direct engagement team, we have seven people. But I look at all our leaders and managers and, and the people in our, our team as engagement leaders, all of them. Because if they don't engage in that work and love what we do every day and love why we do it, then it, it doesn't matter. So I'm excited about the opportunity to even talk about engagement in a way that allows you to be your best, mm. to reach deep down inside you and say, what is it that would make me emotional about this work? What, what is it about this work that makes me go above and beyond? And when you can do that every single day, it doesn't feel like work. You know, I laugh a lot all the time. I, I'm a big jokester and I laugh all the time. People say they can hear me before they see me. And that's just me. I, I'm <laughs> very, oh honey, I'm big big like that and I love laughter and I love making people happy and I love making people feel like they are special of who they are but just who they are and so it is it's a cool thing and I think about back to my meatloaf analogy it's the spices and how you season the meatloaf that really brings the flavor and you think about it in a way that that nostalgia comes back and that's how I look at our entire workforce, they're flavor honey. They bring seasoning. They are the spices to our company. We are only successful because of them. And there is no way that we can um, present anything to the world without making sure that our people are taken care of, that they know how valuable they are to us, how important they are to us. And so it is my goal always to provide support and resources to make sure people have what they need. And so that excites me. Um, I think with COVID-19, it's just been interesting challenge for all of us, right? I am the mother of a beautiful 18-year-old high school senior who uh, is going through some different kind of challenges right now that her senior year is not exactly how she wanted it to end up, right? Um, but what I appreciate about her is that we've been able to have really good conversations and how she continues to engage with her friend group and keeps them encouraged through this whole time. And she's thinking through, um, my, I'll, I'll give a little shout out to her. She is her class's valedictorian, which is a big, wow. big deal. And wow. I'm so grateful yeah. um, for her. And as she thinks about her speech, she said to me, she's like, mom, what do you think my friends need to hear? Mm. 
And that's something that's really cool to me that she's thinking, what can I say to them to encourage them, to engage them in moving forward in the next part of their lives? And I'll get emotional talking about it because I am, whew, I'm extremely proud of her. And she teaches me every single day. Mm -hmm. So if y'all know me, y'all laugh. They call me water barrel because I cry all the time because <laughs> I'm, I'm a very emotional person and I'm very passionate. But to see her come into her own and to think beyond herself and to think, how can I impact somebody in such a way mm -hmm. that I help them understand that they have value that no matter what challenges that they are going through, mm -hmm. that they're special and they can get through it, but it's togetherness, it's the collaboration, it's the love that she has for them and their future that is gonna make a difference. And so that's what I love about my job, which doesn't feel like a job at all. I get to help people bring out their best every single day and it is so important and so special. And that is something that I take very seriously. It's a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. And if I had my 30-second speech that <laughs> Elsie challenged me to do, it is that I'm a lover of people and I'm an encourager and I don't give up easily. Mm. I'm a fighter. Yes. And I fight for relationships and I fight for people having a place where they belong. So that I am extremely grateful for and I'm very passionate about this work. I'm very grateful that all of you chose to be here with us this morning. You can yeah. do a whole lot of things with your time. I tell people all the time, you can always get more money, but you can't get more time. Mm -hmm. So when you decide to spend time with people, that is extremely powerful. So I am grateful for this team of folks here, all of you online who decided to take your time and be with us this morning. And we hope we're able to lift you up and to give you encouragement that you are in the right place at the right time. Whatever you are doing, you are the person that needs to do it. Yes. You are special. You are chosen. You are the one that needs to give what you have. You are all valuable, special, incredibly talented people. So thank you for being here and um, just loving us. Oh, well, you got me in with church, girl. Sorry. You got, you got the people thank in you. the chat thank you. crying. People Sorry, y'all. Like, I told crying. you. Woo. I tell y'all, <laughs> it's deep here. It's oh, deep. It and I, I just appreciate it. So I am absolutely happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I'm, I'm here. I'm a servant leader, just like Shannon wrote that book. I believe in servant leadership. I believe in um, lifting others up and helping them be their best always. So it's something that I take very seriously. So thank you for that. Well, what LaShondra just did was she didn't tell us how to engage with people she just modeled it <laughs> by <laughs> saying the things that she said Appreciate so it. go ahead and populate the q and a up some of these chats real quick while y'all are uh, oh yeah let's that. read some of the chats go ahead elsie uh love your passion thank oh, you for sharing you. this um your time is a gift you are giving me all the feelings, and it's lovely. <laughs> you are authentic. Oh. What a beautiful message and oh, person thank you. you are. Thank Passion you. with a purpose. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. you. you thank you all. Hear that, yeah. I, was feeling, <laughs> I was like, my goodness. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so what's your biggest challenge during COVID, and how have you worked through that? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Um, helping people still feel connected to our culture. Um, one of the things that we, we started working on, we, we call them, we do these drive-bys where we use Slack as a tool um, in our office and we just randomly call people. Hey, how you doing? What's, what's going on? Um, what, it, what is happening in your space? What do you need? And I also believe in holding space. So I believe in vulnerability like we talked about earlier and I started having holding space sessions for people just to be able to just talk about their feelings and to say, you know, this is a rough day and I've been able to just talk to people and say, I've also had a rough day. Let's talk about it. Let's sit together. Let's, let's be in this moment together. And that's been um, really therapeutic for a lot of us um, and it's been that's been a challenge there's also video fatigue that also is a real thing right. um, being on a call or sh video chats for you know six to eight hours or maybe more a day that's also uh, challenging what we've encouraged people to do is take time 
for their own wellness. You know, if, whether it's a couple of hours, an afternoon or a whole day, take time to do the things that you need to do to, to feel better, to, to heal yourself um, and to step away. We know that people are juggling lots of things, children, Sheesh. animals, spouses. Animals are children. Uh, they, they are, and they're, um, they're all, they're all going to be children, honey. <laughs> Trust. My house is full of them at this moment. Um, but give yourself time. Give yourself time to get through it. You know, you'll hear a lot of people saying, oh, just strengthen. You, you just buck up. You can do it. Just hold on. You know, sometimes you just need to vent. Sometimes you need to be sad. Sometimes you need to be cr just to cry. You need to get it out in whatever way it is that you need to do self-care. So make sure you're practicing self-care through that time. And that's, that's one of the challenges. And we want to make sure that people are doing what they need to do for that. Okay. All right. So question. So if you had... If you have a bad spice in the mix, how long do you spin your wheels and try mm. to get them culturally on board? Because it's hard to decipher that part in the interview usually. Any thoughts on that? Yes, and and then I, I want to definitely open it up to this team. Um, well, the good thing about meatloaf, you know, you can cover a lot of stuff up with ketchup. So who 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 <laughs> who's the who's the ketchup in your in your office? I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I think what's so interesting to me is that I think. A lot of times, sometimes people have trauma that they're coming through, right? And so there's people respond in, in ways of how they bring in their experiences, their backgrounds into things. So sometimes it is difficult to work with people who are going through trauma. Do you have somebody in your organization, if it's not you, that knows how to reach people or advise them or help them uncover what is the thing that is hurting them, that they want to also hurt other people? Is there a program, an EAP program, Employee Assistance Fund? Is there a counselor? Is there somebody that can help them get through that? Um, sometimes people just are not fit for your culture of your company. I'll say we are a fast-paced organization. We change and grow very quickly, and we move very quickly. If somebody doesn't go well with that, then they won't succeed well in the company. And I don't want anybody to feel badly about that. If they need to be somewhere else, or they need something else for how they conduct their work life, I want them to be there. Everybody is not going to always go with you on the journey. And that's OK. There's ways to be gracefully to let somebody exit. You don't have to be mean or feel so exhausted by that. It can be mutual, and it can be beneficial to allow someone to walk away. And you got to be OK with that. You're not going to be 100% of everything to everybody, and that's going to be OK. But you need to try, and they need to try. And if it doesn't work out, that's also OK. You thank them for their service, and you help them move on. Mm -hmm. Would you have anything to add you to said that? said everything I would have said. Yeah. yeah well, what, I, what I'm hearing you say is, which I believe in, is that culture is not a one-time thing. Right. Culture is always being co-created by everybody Absolutely. who's a part of, of that meatloaf, if That's you will. Right. That's right. And so, and that the culture begins um, when you're hiring, before right. they're even on board. Right. The, the, the cultural fit mm -hmm. begins then, and then that process of on onboarding them, not only into just what are they going to physically do for you, right. but how are they going to be that ambassador for the culture that you're trying to create? Right. And so to be able to uh, identify times where maybe there's misalignment, yes. that hopefully you're going to see signs of that throughout that process. And then as you begin to see that, to say, all right, how are we going to give people second chances? How are we going to give them tool support to help grow them? That's but right. there's got to be clarity that this is the culture that we're trying to create. That's right. And if that isn't there and they aren't the right fit, mm -hmm and they're not willing and able to be to become a contributor to that meatloaf, then That's sometimes right. the spice just doesn't fit. That's right. That's right. And I actually will add something to that. So the, the one thing that I would add to that, especially what Jason just said, is that um, as much as you can, don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. Don't take it personally when somebody doesn't fit into your culture. It doesn't make your culture wrong, and it doesn't always make them wrong either. Right. Um, and I think as much as you can kind of remove that feeling of, Wow, you know, for even for them, like, or or if you've ever been in a situation where you didn't fit the culture, where instead of saying like, "Man, I'm a failure," it's like, "Man, I just this this isn't for me." There's another right. spot for you. That's There's right. some place else for you. Better. Exactly, right. and so I I love that idea, and especially what Law said about um, do it with grace, and if you can't help them, move on. 
You know, if you figure out, well, you ain't for us. I, I'm, I'm not a cumin in my meatloaf kind of girl. <laughs> but uh, right. there are a couple other dishes around here that I might be able to sprinkle you in. Right. You know, and so how can you then help somebody else move on? I really love this elongated meatloaf metaphor. I hope we yes. continue with this. We can, we can do it all day. All day. I all really right. so feel committed. A couple of questions. Like um, dealing with people is rewarding, but it can also be yes. exhausting. How do you keep mm. yourself encouraged? Yes, I, I love that question because I actually have a, a couple of people that I mentor as well, and one of them in particular, and I know she's on this call, so she's thinking about her. I'm not going to say her name, but she knows I'm talking about her. <laughs> she's such a giver to her teams and people that she cares about and loves, but she doesn't always get fed herself. So what I always try to make sure is that I have people that I go to to feed into me and you all need that because like, there are people with very strong personalities and they're, they're, they seem to have it together. We don't always have together all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't. We need people to listen to us and just comfort us and not necessarily fix everything, but to just say, I, I don't want to talk about this. Let me emote for a second. You know, like I just cry on camera like I do. So I'm just emoting to all of y'all right now. <laughs> um, but like I need to be poured into too. Because as you pour out to people, you get depleted and you need somebody to feed your spirit back. Um, so make sure you have people that you can look to for doing that. And I love British comedy, so I watch a lot of, of British comedy. The Graham Norton Show, if y'all watch BBC America, it's fantastic. And it makes me laugh and I love it. So I, I do those things. One more question? One more question. All right, you actually have two that have the same. Oh, I knew this was going to get oh. voted up. Um, so, La, you can, I'm going to give you two and you can choose. <laughs> the first one is, what's up, La? The last time I remember, you were rapping slash rhyming on stage at church. Can you fire up the mic? Jason can hit you with a beat. Oh, my god! That's option number one. Oh, my god! Or a more sedate, <laughs> what is your favorite onboarding tool? Oh, or you can rap about your favorite onboarding tool. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you feel. I love y'all. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's going on. It's going to get up on it. It's rising. Like, I, I'm just going to give y'all the, the, the Cliff Notes version. There is a TEDx out. You can actually Google it. Uh, my daughter and I did a whole thing called The Power of Your Story, The Power of Your Voice. And it's a TEDx from 2015, but it's out there on YouTube. You can Google it. That's me and all my rapping prowess. You know, <laughs> that's it. I want to rap right now. I'm La La and I came to get down. I'm not internationally known, but I'm I'm known to rock the microphone, because I get stupid. I mean outrageous. Stay away from me if it's contagious. Yes, I'm a winner. No, not a loser. The EBMC is what I choose. The ladies love me. Girls adore me. Well, I know even if they saw me. Like, the way that I ride my show. And this is why, you know, I don't say what. What? It takes two to make a thing go right. Mm, 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 mm. It takes two to make it out of sight. All right, y'all, that's enough, that's enough. That's it, that's all you get. Bass. See, y'all yeah. gonna have to pay me. Bass. See, next time, y'all gonna have to pay me for the rest of that, so. <laughs> just, just so you know. <laughs> Jim, I know that was Jim. Jim, I love you, I miss it you. Was it's Jim. good to see you. It was Jim. I know it was it's Jim. Back. What's Jim? up, Jim? Love you. <laughs> Already knows. <laughs> a little raw base. You gotta go back to the chat so I can see what people are saying about oh this. Oh my gosh. Thank you all yes. for allowing me to be a part of this today. Thank you again for your time. You're very special. Appreciate y'all. Bring in the Thank sauce. You. That's what Bring I love. Bring in the sauce. Bring in the sauce. Bringing Bringing the sauce. The sauce. I love, love it. Oh love you too. <laughs> okay. So just like we did for Elsie, let's show Law some love in the chat. Thank Tell you. her your key takeaways. <laughs> Thank you from what she shared. And like I said, my key takeaway, I really, I already said it, which was that you didn't just sit here and teach us about what it looks like to engage with people in the workplace. You actually did it. You showed us. So thank you for that. Thank, thank you, you for that. Thank you. All right. You all. Before our final guest, <laughs> we have another giveaway. Woo, Get excited. Giveaway. So Bye. this one actually giveaway. happened before the event today because we did a little kind of a contest, I guess you could say, where we asked people to make their own video about what engagement looks like to them Ooh. or what it means to you right now during this time. And um, we actually have two winners. And after the event's over, we're going to post those videos to Facebook. And um, I'm going to tell you the, the winners' names. But what the winners are going to get is what we're calling a relay prize pack. Ooh. <laughs> hey. And really what they're getting is they're getting one of Jason's books, Ooh. one of my books, Ooh. 
I know, shocker. <laughs> and um, but then they're also getting free admittance to one of our public workshops, which um, there are three remaining this year, so they have three to choose from. They might be in person, they might be virtual. We don't know yet, um, but whichever they get free registration to that, it's care to lead, care to live, or care to influence, and we have one each of those between now and the end of the year. And so, those two winners are Daniel Jude and Brian Shields. Woo! Woo! Yes, so again, Daniel and Brian will be reaching out to you by email so that we can make sure we well, get Brian those said, books to you. you. You're welcome, Brian. Hey. Thanks for the video. <laughs> um, and so we can get your books to you and then also information on how to register. Choose which one you want to attend and how to register. Now, make sure you stay tuned to the very end because we have one more giveaway, and this giveaway has a value of about $1,000. Nice. No. No. Dun -dun. I want to get in on that. Is and, that my, um, my picture and autograph? No? No? Is that worth a thousand dollars? We could add something you're, in you're there. rap recordings. <laughs> so my anthology. <laughs> we're going to do this one. We're going to use the randomizer for this one again. But we want to know who's interested in it. So, Because um, not everyone will want this. We're giving away. So Relay has a subscription plan where you support the work of Relay and you get to do fun stuff with us. So you get things like a video library, you get monthly coaching. So this is the individual monthly coaching subscription for a year. So it's a $75 wow. a month subscription. So it's a $900 value and you get the full year for free. But we want to know if you want it. Not everyone wants it. So all we're going to ask you to do, Jason is paying close attention. So during Jason Otero, while Jason... Barger, so kind of like in the in-between time, we want you to type coaching in the chat, and everyone who types coaching, you're telling us that you're interested. If it's only three, oh my... Oh, it's, oh, not it's a lot. Oh, it's okay. Just, it's rolling. Jason, yeah. you better start typing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> this is a lot. So maybe I, Everybody. Like, like, maybe if you don't <laughs> maybe want... That's maybe we thing. should just put everybody's who names in. Want it? How yeah. many? 60. 60? Okay. Um, we... But we have time. We have Jason's whole section here, his whole session to um, to get him in the randomizer. And in the next break, oh boy. we're going to announce the winner. So I actually do – maybe this will reduce the numbers. I'm the one that does the coaching. No, that's the <laughs> number. You guys get Shannon. So that's awesome. I, well, it's a monthly coaching call. It's a group coaching session. And we coach <laughs> – Brian. Plot twist. Yes. I love it. Take my vote back. Yes. There, are, <laughs> <laughs> there are coaching. Did someone say that? <laughs> Jonathan Flora. <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> he produces the slap cast. Okay. He, he said what? He's that cumin. He's, yeah, he's the bad spice. There's not he's enough for that cumin. bad spice. Okay, so we'll announce the winner at the next break. Um, we'll, you'll, you'll start coaching in May if you win. All right, there's going to be more to come on that, too, for everybody. We have something for everybody today, so don't worry. All right, our final guest, last but certainly not least, I'm excited to introduce to you Jason Barger. He is a highly sought-after keynote speaker, uh, visionary, consultant. You've already heard from him a couple times today. Uh, founder of Step Back Leadership Consulting. He works with organizations that are passionate about culture change, leadership development, innovation, service, and bringing their mission to their everyday life. Jason is passionate about his family and travels all over the place, actually, um, right out of here, the hub, Columbus, Ohio, um, all around the world, engaging the minds and hearts of people. Okay. And uh, Jason, for the life of me, we've talked about this, I don't know how many times, I cannot remember how we originally got introduced. But all I know is we said, kind of like, it was kind of like with law. Like, I want to be your friend. Do you want to be mine? Yes, no, maybe. Like in fifth grade, <laughs> on a little box. piece of paper. It, I'm sure it was a mutual friend and said, you all need, do, do we have Jason's slide up? Can yes. You, do we? Okay, I just yes. want to make sure because we've got to do all the technical stuff, right? But we just decided to start meeting monthly at La Chatelaine. We won't tell you which one because we don't want you all, like, bum rushing the <laughs> restaurant. Well, you can't right now anyway. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you can't right now anyway. Um, but we started meeting, and eventually I worked on a couple projects with you, and now here you are helping us out with Leadership Forum. And so I'm so excited to have you today. I'm going to turn over the floor to you now. Thank Woo! you, sir. Jason! Awesome. I We're am privileged. <laughs> uh, what's that? We're your cheerleaders. Yeah, cheerle my cheerleaders. Thank you. I I I'm privileged and honored to be on this uh, six-foot separated <laughs> stage from these wonderful people and to be adding my contribution, by the way, to the meatloaf discussion. Yes. 
because I love the metaphor, and my contribution was that I think meatloaf is the most poorly branded food yes. in the world because I think the experience of meatloaf, and anytime you have meatloaf, I always walk away from it feeling like it is it was better than I thought it was going to be. Yes. But because it's called meat and then loaf, <laughs> that you add the word loaf in with meat, it just doesn't make doesn't sense. Know. So I, I want to start a campaign. If anybody in the chat room out there, <laughs> let's start trying to figure out how are we going to rename meatloaf? Because I guarantee if it was called something different, yeah. it would skyrocket in That's popularity. Right. That's exactly right. Communications, so, folks. Jump there you the go. Chat. Let's, let's start rebranding uh, meatloaf. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's, it's meat love. <laughs> meat love. Yes. Or I love not. it. I love it. That's actually terrible. I and love inappropriate. It. <laughs> it's amazing. Deconstructed steak with sauteed vegetables. Love and loaf. We're the, we could just sit here and read these. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> this is amazing. Okay. So I oh I've already derailed my entire thing. Like I don't you don't even need me to talk. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna rebrand meatloaf, and uh, I'll talk about engagement just for a second from the, from the uh, if I can from the standpoint of how do we personally engage. I echo everything that's been said so far that uh, we all are leaders, some of which by title, some of which by the sense that somebody is always watching what we're doing. Yeah. They're always taking their cues from us, and so all of us lead. And so I want to talk about engagement from the standpoint of the mindset that we approach with engagement, uh, because right now in, in the world, the unique time that we're in right now, and then I'll kind of circle back to what does that mean from an organizational standpoint and with a lot of the teams and organizations that I help serve of how do you then engage and build culture uh, proactively. So I'll, I'll come back to that at the end. But right now in the time that we're in, uh, which we've all been experiencing, uh, engagement, uh, I believe, uh, it requires a choice and a choice to engage. And it, it often takes courage, because especially during COVID and, and all of this where we are being asked to social distance and, and shelter in place, that sometimes we as humans, we can take the approach of then becoming a hermit and distancing ourselves and or disconnecting from people and the things that we care about the most. So if you're anything like me, we've been getting creative to try to come up with ideas of, of how do we stay engaged. And you've probably been connecting with people through Zoom or through technology that you haven't you know, spoken with in a while to reach out and try to engage. Uh, you've, uh, we, we did a trampoline dunk contest that I highlighted on my Instagram account of, or as a family. just to, We wanted to have a dunk contest just to try to keep ourselves engaged, the foods we make. But it takes courage. And as, as we entered in this time with COVID and uh, the coronavirus and everything, I, I had these flashbacks to back to 2008 when I had first quit my job. I had an, am an amazing job I was lucky to do, but I, I quit my job and was writing my first book. And this was at 2008, right as the first recession was beginning. And so most people around me are like, wait, you're crazy. Why are you quitting your job? And, and, and you're writing a book. What is this thing possibly about? And so I'm writing this book, Step Back from the Baggage Claim, change the world, start at the airport. Start, which a lot of these messages, start where you are, start what's right, right in front of you. And I remember at that time where no income, two young kids at the time, my wife, Amy, people around us saying, you're crazy, what is it that you're doing? And there I was sitting there writing this book that I had no idea what it was gonna become. And yet I wrote on my dry erase board in my office, this big playground of ideas that I had, I wrote up on there these words that said, courage is sitting in ambiguity. Courage is sitting in ambiguity. And over the last month or so, those words have come back into my mind because I believe engagement starts with a choice. And are we going to be courageous enough to actually even engage? Mm -hmm. And so at those times when any of the things would start to swirl in my head of uncertainty and ambiguity and unknown, which were those things, who are you to possibly write a book? Who cares what you have to say? Uh, how has this even become a sustainable job? Uh, any of the, how do you pay for anything? You know, what are the economics? All of that fear and, and, and doom and gloom, whenever that would begin to surface and that story would begin to be told in my head as all of us have as humans, I would stop. And I would step back and oftentimes I would get down on my hands and knees and I would say a prayer, I would meditate, I would return myself back to 
Why am I doing this in the first place? And what's the authentic message and mission and story to be, that, I, that I'm sharing with the world, even though I don't know how it's going to play out? And so courage, true courage and beginning of engagement for me is starting with, are you going to have the courage to sit in ambiguity? And right now, all of us and people listening right now, that all of us are sitting in this time where many things are ambiguous to us. There's a lot of uncertainty, unknown that's out there in the world right now. We don't know how things are exactly going to play out. And so what we don't need to do is just to just act and just be busy for the sake of busyness and aimless activity. But true courage as leaders comes when we're able to step back and sit in that ambiguity and not let our mindset go down that pathway to fear and to doubt and to doom and gloom. But in the midst of that ambiguity, there's also another pathway that our mindsets can go down. And this other pathway over here, in the midst of ambiguity, there's also opportunity. There's opportunities to see things through new eyes and see things that maybe we couldn't always see of how we can engage. There's also liberation that takes place in the midst of this ambiguity that I'm going to liberate myself from an old story or an old thing that I've experienced or those fear and doubt things that are, are kind of weighing me down. I've got to liberate myself and let myself go of those. And then there's what I refer to as forced innovation. In this midst of this time of ambiguity and uncertainty, we are all forced to find a better way to do it to find a better way to connect to each other, to find a better way to stimulate progress, to further our mission, whatever that may be. So in the midst of, 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 of the times that we're experiencing, I believe that engagement actually starts with our ability to sit in ambiguity and then have the courage to sit there and then say, what is that first step going to be? And how am I going to choose to not go down this path of fear and doubt and doom and gloom and panic, but am I going to go down this this path that is filled with opportunity, with liberating myself from that, and then innovation to find ways to engage and further the things that I care about and the people that, that I'm connected with. I'm reminded of uh, Andy Politz is a guy, he's actually from Columbus, who's been on a number of Mount Everest expeditions, has climbed Mount Everest many different times. And I remember him telling uh, about the story that stuck with me all these years, that um, when you get to a certain height on Everest, the elevation, you get up there, the oxygen gets so thin that you need, f you need to take four breaths before you can even take a step. Mm. Like literally, they wake up at three in the morning in their tents, and they have to sit there and go, <gasps> <gasps> put on their shoe. Mm. Wow. Four breaths, wow. tie their shoe. Oh my God. Four breaths, put the other shoe on. And as that image has stuck with me, because there are times in all of our lives, sometimes in times like this where things are uncertain and ambiguity, where we need to remind ourselves that what we need to do is have the courage to take those four breaths mm. and then figure out, not aimlessly, but what's that next action? Mm. That's right. What's that next way that I'm going to engage with the people in my life and with the people around me? And so uh, I remind ourselves, like I think about my times in my life, uh, I lo I've lost both my parents in the last five years at a time when, when I didn't think that was going to happen. And that image again came back that some days we just have to have the courage to sit in that ambiguity and to take those four breaths and then figure out what's the next step. Am I going to be courageous enough to engage? Yeah. And what's that going to look like? I've been asked a number of times over the last few years to, uh, for whatever reason, this word, to talk about how, not only engagement and how do we lead, and then what's the culture that we're trying to create? But this word spark, many different conferences have, have used, the, uh, companies and conferences have used this term of you know, sparking innovation or sparking culture, or sparking engagement. And, so they, and oftentimes as a keynote, they've asked me to, to, to talk about what does it mean to spark? And the, when, it, when I've been asked that, the, the, the story that came to my mind is, I don't know if you saw it, but I think Derek uh, Sivers was the one that uh, made it popular. But there was a viral video a few years ago going around, and it was this outdoor concert scene, gra big grassy landscape. You know, there's a band playing off, beautiful summer day, and all these people on the field are dancing. And in the midst of this scene, all of a sudden there's this one guy that, like, leaves the pack, leaves the crowd, mm -hmm. and he goes out into this empty part of the field, and I, I'm going to stand up for this because he goes out of this area and he just starts doing this like weird like dance, you know, and he's 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 obviously he's into something, but he's just got his own unique dance to do. Mm -hmm. 
And this video went viral because over the next three minutes of him off by himself doing this, all of a sudden something interesting happens. They, somebody yeah, sees it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, so, and, leave, and then they leave the pack, and they come down next to this guy, and they start standing next to him, and they start doing the same thing with him. <laughs> and all of a sudden, over the next three minutes of the video, you watch the entire culture and, and the whole field shifts. Mm -hmm. And everybody starts to go down, and then the whole, the whole field, the whole landscape changes from this one guy, and, and then everybody, <laughs> it was something like, like that. he was... Yep doing all this funky stuff yeah, that's exactly right. and, that's and right. it's an amazing thing but anyway I've been asked to what, what so what is that spark what sparks engagement what sparks leadership what, how do we begin to spark something new in our lives or in our culture and I've and, and the best I've come up with is that all of us have an opportunity every single day to spark and again not aimlessly but intentionally and what I think about is that to and create a spark you have to have two things collide right to create right. friction and it starts with, for us personally, something, a discomfort that we have with something in the world. Mm -hmm. Something makes us uncomfortable. My own discomfort with something, for this guy, it was like, I can't be just doing the same thing in the pack. I need my space. I got to go out here. I got I to do my own authentic dance, whatever that is for you. But something in us, and you th if, you, if you think about entrepreneurs, Beyonce, you think about uh, athletes, you think about people who've done uh, movement makers and change makers, there's been a moment in their life where their discomfort with something collides with the comfort of their own gifts. And from this discomfort and this comfort of their own gifts, something collides and it creates this spark, and all of a sudden we choose to engage. We choose to step forward into something and lean into a relationship, a project, a, a company that we say, no, 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 I'm going to be a part of this. I'm going to share in the creation of this meatloaf, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and something happens. But from that initial spark then of engagement, the reality is the flames, the, the, the initial spark is a one-time kind of spark. And we have a chance to spark every day. But the reality is true engagement then comes when all of us as individuals again as leaders but also entire groups of people and organizations decide to say because how does a spark then move from a spark to a flame is we have to breathe oxygen into it right. and so if you ever started a campfire you know you get down we've done a lot of campfires around our house lately is you get down you know with your kids and you start blowing on the flames and all of a sudden you breathe oxygen into it yeah. and so all of us as humans for in our own lives but then certainly across organizations we have an opportunity and the question is, is what, are, what are we breathing oxygen into in our lives? Mm -hmm. And so everybody listening out here, like the question I ask, and, and, and I hope that you'll add into the, to the chat uh, function is, what is it that you, what needs you to breathe oxygen into it? Mm -hmm. What is that engagement that you're looking for? Who are the relationships that maybe need you to breathe oxygen into? And, and how do you need to receive oxygen to? Mm -hmm. But what are the projects that you want to breathe oxygen into? Not recklessly, aimlessly, like being busy just for the sake of being busy. But my second book is called Remember. And the reason why it's called Remember is what are those things we need to remember each day cognitively? But then what's that active choice to re-member, to re-up and renew our membership, to step forward intentionally and say, I'm going to breathe oxygen into this. And so I, it's, an, it's something I've been thinking a lot about lately is in terms of engagement, but in my own life, but certainly with the companies and organizations I serve is, what are we going to breathe oxygen into? And as both you guys identify, Lashandra, what you were talking about at Cover My Meds, companies and organizations that realize that they are always creating culture, That's right. and they are always in the game. I, I, people ask me, what is my, my job and role as I support teams and organizations or speak at events? I say, my job is to help engage the minds and hearts of people mm -hmm. and help everybody participate in the culture that you're trying to create. Yeah. And how amazing that is that all of us every day, we co-create the culture together. Mm -hmm. And the best organizations are the ones, which it sounds like what you're describing at Cover My Meds, is I, in my book, Three, Thermostat Cultures, I talk about what's the process that we go through to lead change. Mm -hmm. Because if, if most, most people don't study change theories and understand like that's not something interesting that most people study. But if you study change theory, it all follows the same pattern. Mm -hmm. How do we as individuals and how do groups of people proactively shape the culture that we want? So in that book, I talk about what's the process that we go through to engage those minds and hearts. Mm -hmm. 
And from an organizational standpoint, to make sure from the way we hire, to the way we onboard, to the way that we engage their mind and hearts in the creation, I talk about creation of our own cup of coffee, mm -hmm. or in this case, creation of our own meatloaf, That's right? right? Mm -hmm. That we need to make sure that we have values mm -hmm. that links to, la to language that drives the behavior we, that we want, and we need to be able to anchor it every single day in every single thing that we do. And the best teams, the best leaders, the best organizations are the ones that are commit committed to breathing oxygen every day, mm -hmm. to have the courage to sit individually, but then the courage to step forward collectively. Yeah. And then are the ones that are, are disciplined enough to follow that process and to realize that we have to be committed to the process, the infinite process rather than the finite results. That's right. And then in the process of that, we build and create the kind of meatloaf that we want. That's right. Tasty meatloaf. And it's a meatloaf that sustains people. That's mm -hmm. right. That they want a table they want to eat at. That's right. And they realize they are a co-creator in that process of shaping that meatloaf. And that is what it means to engage, mm -hmm. to step forward and to breathe oxygen and have the courage mm -hmm. to do it for something greater than ourselves. Absolutely. Jason, one of the things that you said that was really interesting to me is this, this thought about breathing oxygen into something and your earlier story around sometimes it takes four breaths. Sometimes yeah. it's not just going to be that one, you no know, doubt. steady breath. Sometimes you have to do four breaths, you know, in order to see something come to life. And I think that's really powerful because probably in the times that it's hardest is when it's going to take the most oxygen. No that's doubt. Right. I mean, I, 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 exactly I referenced that with my parents, but I mean, there were times where I had both my parents at the same time in different hospital beds, mm. one in ICU, one in a recovery room. And, and yet my brother and sister and our family and everything it, it, at that stage in life. And I have a business, I have things I'm doing. I have a young family at that time in my life. It, it required four breaths yes. to do anything. Absolutely. Yes. And so there are times where that happens. And then there's other times where we just need to, to take those four breaths in order to be intentional and strategic. And as companies and organizations, we got to be smart about, about what we're going to give our energy to. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. That's exactly right. That's awesome. Man. Great stuff. Good. So yeah. I, I, I'm interested in any questions yeah. that might be out there or any weirdo things you want to ask any of us or, or things. Uh, yeah. You have one question, which is, how do you force a mindset that will allow innovation, especially in a traditional company with, set, with a set of goals and objectives to follow plan A or plan B? This is outside of growth groups. In a traditional, okay. So first of all, is I, I don't think we can force mindsets, mm -hmm. but I think we can invite mindsets and we can create culture in spaces where we begin to develop. I'm very big on developing mindsets and we need to help people uh, challenge the way they think and create an environment. And in that environment then, much like the one that we're in right now, is the term I used in terms of forced innovation is uh, we are now in an environment right now and the space is right where we're being forced, we have to innovate and find new ways to do things, right? right. And so uh, the, the most innovative teams and companies are the ones that create that space and honor new ideas. They, they defy tradition in, in many ways. Um, they honor tradition. They honor their past. If you know the Jim Collins work, especially in his book, Built to Last, he talks about the yin and the yang of pres preserving the core. You got to preserve the core of who and why and why the company exists in the first place and all those traditional kind of honoring the tradition. But at the very same time, on the other side of the, the yang of that is we have to stimulate progress. Mm -hmm. right. And so we got to be asking those questions of innovation and we've got to be seeking those things. So uh, it's that yin and the yang. And, and the other thing in terms of, again, not forcing, um, forcing in, uh, in, uh, uh, mindset is, again, creating that space. Uh, what comes to my mind is I'm reminded about how bamboo grows if uh, most people don't know how bamboo grows, but if you know bamboo it, it, from the ground surface level, it looks like just one bamboo shoots that up out of the ground. But yet underneath the ground, the way that bamboo actually grows, it starts with what's called a calm, this little calm in, underneath the ground. And the bamboo shoots off in one direction and grows a little bit. And then it shoots off in another direction and then another direction and another direction. And it does this underneath the surface. And then until finally when it's ready, it shoots up through the surface. Mm. 
And to me, that's always been a great image about innovation and creating space for that, for those ideas, is underneath the surface, there's a lot of ideas and things we think about that, that just need more time to grow and develop. Mm -hmm. And we got to create the, the soil for that to happen. Yes. And then when the idea is ready, it's going to shoot through the... Am I weirding everybody out? No, or is that... I love that. I love bamboo. <laughs> it's great. I didn't know that much about yeah. bamboo, but maybe I'll love and it banyan more trees. Now. Bamboo and banyan trees are my favorite. What to, I, I, I'm sorry. My eyes are failing me. I love what, what are the, what the other questions? The second one is, um, these are actually both have three upvotes. Question for, question for all of you speakers. What is different in preparing for a virtual speaking event versus a live speaking event? Does it feel the same since you're still speaking on a panel? I, I'll, I'll go first and then chime in. I, I do a ton of events. So I, I think I did 70 or so keynotes last year, and I'm always with groups and companies all, 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 all across the country and around the world. And so this is different. And we, we are in a new, different time. I love being with people where I can look directly in their eyes and we can connect. And there's, uh, I've been saying this lately that there is going to be a time, I don't know when it is in the next uh, hopefully months, weeks, months, whatever that is where there is power in congregation. Mm -hmm. There's power in congregating and being in the same space with people. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can't wait till that time we do that. But I would say what I'm also learning, a part of that forced innovation that all of us are experiencing is that this is also effective. Mm -hmm. Effective in really interesting ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's helpful that you all are here because yes, I wanna mm -hmm. connect and look into eyes and talk with people. Mm -hmm. But I've also been doing a number of these virtually, virtual things for companies and supporting places all over. And what I'm learning already is that people are engaging mm -hmm. and connecting. And thankfully, technology is allowing us to do this. So my preparation is always the same. Mm -hmm. But I think the mode and the medium through which we're using makes it a little different of how we, try, we have to be intentional mm -hmm. all the time about how do we interact and engage online. Yeah. No, I, I would absolutely agree. I do new hire orientation for our staff every other week. And so we're constantly, at this point since COVID happened, we've um, had 33 people that have come through our, um, our off offices, virtual offices. And I feel like I, I want people to feel connected to who we are as presenters. And I want them to feel they, they as an authenticity that we talked about that shines through and then they can actually feel the emotion of how much we care about them. So I, I prepare the same, but then my hope is that they feel what we're trying to present and what we, what we give back to them from an energy perspective. I mean, I would say I, I also speak a lot. I did not have 70 engagements because I'm not as cool as Jason, but <laughs> I, I occasionally people will You're ask me to come cooler. on stage and say things. Um, and what I would say is that this has been very interesting. So over the course of this time, I participated in some other virtual events that have been more traditional, kind of like everybody call in from, um, from their home um, and then speak to a panel. And I will not lie, I have been guilty a time or two or when other people were speaking of like checking my email or it's really easy to be distracted in my household. I have a toddler and a newborn. Um, and so it, it was easy to kind of get distracted and not still feel in the moment. Um, I want to give a shout out to Shannon right now because mm -hmm. I honestly cannot imagine as somebody who's, who's planned events before to have my like annual huge event like need to shift in this way um, and to come up with something this cool and creative that like yeah. we haven't seen before. And Shannon was saying earlier um, that she's so outside her comfort zone in doing this because it's we're creating this on the fly. And she also told us like come in, engage with each other and have fun, um, which I think we've done yeah. extremely well. Yes. If nothing yes. else, we had a good time. I don't know what y'all been I, doing, I, but I, we were having exactly. a good time. Um, but I would say that that this event of being able to at least connect with everybody here in the studio, um, I think it is it has allowed me to engage even more deeply with, with folks in the audience. So I love this kind of like hybrid. I think it's really cool that we get to be here socially distant, um, but still here in each other's presence. Because for me, um, audience interaction is a really big part of, of how I speak. And so if I had just been sitting on my computer, um, I would have been not quite as engaging, I think, as, as what I was able to do with all of all of the energy here. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I, I want to. I want to. I'll tag on that too because yeah. about Shannon and the and the entire relay team. Yes, all that, the, everybody. The first call that, that that we had after that decision about this event, and and I I didn't say a word. I think for the first seven minutes of the phone call, and Shannon just talked about their approach, and the way they were thinking about it, and what the purpose of the event still was, and possible adaptation of it. And I think was getting to the point of saying, would, would we still be interested and would we still support in this way? And uh, I just so appreciated the, the intentionality of the team and, and also the not running from, hey, there, again, in the midst of ambiguity, uncertainty, unknown, there is opportunity mm -hmm. and there is innovation mm -hmm. and there is liberation from an old way of, I know this is the way we've always done it, but let's be open to something that we might not know yet. Yeah. And, and that's uh, hopefully this is then going to be well received that way. Absolutely. And if not, we'll learn anyway and we'll, right. we'll move forward. That's we'll right. take this down off YouTube because yeah. y'all some haters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question is, what are some signs that you might be premature in your spark? You have the idea, but it's still too early to take the plunge. Are there a few signs? I, uh, 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 I'll say one of the signs that you know it's time to spark is we get that feeling mm -hmm. <laughs> that are the butterflies in our stomach or something in us starts to say, uh, how do we, I, it's, it's time to step in and it's, t it's time to step forward. And so that's individual, obviously, for everyone. I'm, I'm flashing back to a, a, a school or an education setting that I remember speaking at and uh, them talking about uh, a student that was uh, observing um, some bullying and some things happening and and then the courage that of, of sparking of stepping in and saying uh, although many people are trying to ignore that this is happening I'm gonna step in and I'm I'm gonna put myself forward and just say no more of this I'm thinking about um, executives uh, with companies that that I've served that have realized that we are not acting and operating in alignment with those core values and with the culture that we say. And so they've said, what are we going to do? And, I, and that feeling started and then to step forward and to spark. Or creatives out there that have some idea that what I hear you saying, some idea of something I, you want to start, you want to begin, something you want to do. You start to have those feelings, and that's a sign that it's time to do it. But the reality is also that sparking isn't a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. So what, what the way I would answer to that is it's okay to spark and then it's also okay to take your time and figure out how do you want to breathe oxygen into it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have it all figured out all at once. That, that, ed, that executive that says we need to, uh, we're not operating or acting in alignment with our values and, and they're going to make that initial statement and spark and put that out of the world, that doesn't mean they have to have it all figured out of what they need to do next. But then what they need to do is be willing to go on the, on the journey, the process to say, okay, well then, how are we going to breathe oxygen in into to searching for solutions? And so, you know, if the idea is something that you're wanting to begin, I mean, I, I, I'll admit, like, I had no idea how to write a book, the first book that I wrote. No idea. But mm -hmm. I had to spark and I had to begin to write. <laughs> and then you ask the next questions. And you ask the next questions, and you slowly you breathe oxygen into that. So, yes. I hope that answers your question. And I think part of it too is is unity of effort. You don't have to be the only one with ideas, and you can share your ideas. And it's having these different perspectives and experiences come together can help you build that upon that idea. And so then you're collaborating with a lot of minds, thinking through maybe parts of it that you didn't even think about, and they can add, be additive to that. So just start somewhere. Start now, and it's okay to do that. Yeah. yeah. Was, I, oh, go ahead, Shannon. I, all I was going to say was for so many years, for way too many years, I failed to act on that spark because I thought what that meant was the people who did act on their spark, like writing a book or whatever, that they must know how to do it already, that they might, are, they must mm -hmm. already have it figured out. Yeah. And what I've since learned is, is that's absolutely not true. That's that's right. Absolutely. Not. Actually, the that's learning, part of the story we right, tell ourselves of fear and doubt in our head. Fear yeah. and doubt it tells yeah. you exactly. You tell yourself a story that, well, I can't take this next step. I can't take that's this right. next action because I don't know how. And I'm unsure, just like doing mm -hmm. the event the way we're doing it today, just like I totally identify with what you said about writing a book, Jason. I, I put it off for years 
yeah. because I thought, well, it'll never be good as so-and-so's because I've never mm -hmm. done this before. But that's how you learn. You learn in doing. That's right. And then you get better and better if you want to keep applying yourself there. Mm -hmm. Where were you going to share, Elsie? Well, I actually just wanted to share, there were um, some words that a mentor once told me. So you all asked uh, uh, about my kind of journey as an entrepreneur. And I had a mentor once say, I asked her, you know, how did you know that now was the right time to do it? And she said, I couldn't not do it anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be, even just saying it, I get chills because I found it to be so true in my own life that there are some ideas and some callings that you have where there will come a point in your life where you literally can't not do it anymore. Um, and so that has always been a, a guiding kind of force in my life. Mm -hmm. How many more questions do we have time for? We have some time to go to break. So we got to oh. wrap up. Thank you all for asking questions, though. Right, yeah. this is so good. Anyways. Oh, my gosh. This is amazing. I love it. I love yeah. it. And I wish we had time to just keep going on and on and on. Um, we did promise ending by 11. Um, we might go a couple minutes over. And then what we'll do is we'll leave the networking room. You can go back into those tables and continue to network if you'd like afterwards. Um, but thank you all so much, Jason. Again, give Jason some love in the chat. Yay! Give him your, your key takeaways so he can read those. Um, I, I know mine is definitely the four breaths. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely yes. the four breaths. Um, that was a great visual image, and it just mm -hmm. reminded me of so many things in life. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I have several announcements, and I want to make sure these are up on the screen so uh, the producers can help me make sure that we've got those up there. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So the first announcement I want to make, I did mention – that a couple of our winners get to take advantage of one of our uh, public workshops. The two that are coming up the soonest are in um, June and in August. And again, more than likely the June one is going to be virtual. August is iffy, depending on what happens with our social distancing orders from the governor. But you can find out information about them online. Just go to RelayLeadership.com and then go to the training tab and look for Care to Lead or slash Care to Lead and you can find out all that information. Now, we have a special opportunity that's only for the Leadership Forum audience, and I'm going to bring that up now. And that has to do with our long-term intensive programs, NextGen and ExecGen. NextGen is for young professionals. ExecGen is for experienced professionals. When we say experience, we're looking for folks that have like 20-plus years supervisory experience. These are extensive programs that go into everything from emotional intelligence, servant leadership, change management, there's service projects, there's coaching, professional coaching that they get, advisory, all kinds of stuff in these programs. But for this audience only, we're running a super early bird registration that if you register and pay your fees by, what is it, June 30th, Jason, that um, there's much bigger discounts on the programs. And the websites that you need to visit are right there on the screen. For NextGen, it's NextGen Leaders. And ExecGen, it's RelayLeadership.com slash ExecGen. So check out those programs. And what we're talking about is for 2021. They don't start until late January for 2021. Okay. Now, this event, we also have one in the fall called Impact Columbus. And the cool thing about that event is many of the folks that have been with us today are going to join us again. Why? Because we decided, in light of our current environment in the world, that we need to, to extend this topic of engagement to community engagement. And we're going to do that at Impact Columbus on September 30th. And we have powerhouse presenters. It is going to be co-presented by LaShondra Baker, Cover My Meds, and Dale Heidloff, American Electric Power. So we've got co-presenters for that event. It's going to be amazing. And both of them were just so pumped to be able to join forces on this event. And for everyone on the, um, on the platform today, you can get your ticket to that event for 30 bucks. Now, here's the thing. Chime in and help me with this. I know this event was free. Actually, it, we should have charged, but we didn't want to because of the situation that everyone was going through. And we felt like pivoting to tickets for an online event was too hard of a turn mm -hmm. um, for this event. And so what we decided to do was make this event free, but then we're making tickets for Impact Columbus at a greatly reduced price for 30 bucks. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it just helps us put on the event. Even though this is virtual, I know we're not in a banquet room and having a meal together, but it's still not free. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so we need your support. If you're interested in continuing this conversation around engagement, 
you want to see Law again? I know Elsie's going to be there. Jason's still working out his travel schedule. Are, is you, are you a yes or you're not sure yet? I, I, I'm trying my best. He's trying no his best. Yeah. <laughs> tries, no he, pressure. He's got this. Yeah. I mean, there's only a bunch of people <laughs> online wanting you to be there, but whatever. Um, <laughs> and so um, so he's had to re reschedule a lot of his speaking engagements for obvious reasons. So we're going to see all of us again, plus all of our friends from AEP are going to be there. So make sure that you um, you can go to RelayLeadership.com slash Impact Columbus and get your ticket today if you want. Um, all right, so the next thing I want to tell you, I'm trying to just buzz through these as quickly as I can. What I'd like to do right now is I would like to tell you about, we already told you about how to join the email list. I want to mention the subscription. So I mentioned earlier that we have Relay subscriptions. Relay subscriptions serve two purposes. One of them is it helps support the ongoing work of our organization. It's a monthly subscription. And depending on what level you choose, you can get access to, there's like a newsletter, and then you, that's every week. It's personally for me, and yes, I really do write it. Um, and I communicate directly with the subscribers on a weekly basis every, I think it's Monday or Tuesday morning, you get that. And then other levels include things like the monthly coaching, access to an online video library, and then there's levels for individuals and for businesses and corporations, so you can get multiple people on one subscription. So go to RelayLeadership.com slash subscriptions to find out all the information about that, to look at the subscription levels, and you'll help support the organization, and you can sign up for the coaching. Now, I know you're going to wait to do that because you want to know who won the free coaching, right? You're like, well, I don't want to sign up yet unless I, because if I'm a winner, I'm going to do that. So this is the final giveaway. Drum roll. And Jason sent me the name and I have to look, will you just give me her name again so I have to open up my phone? So Judy Lehman, Judy! you are Judy, Judy, Judy. the winner. And I'm sorry, I dropped Judy. Judy Lehman. We will contact you about how to get set up for our monthly coaching. Oh, Judy. Judy. Yeah. Yes, Judy. Yeah. Woo. In the chat. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. We're so excited um, that you're interested and in, in, uh, the randomizer chose you. So <laughs> I love what how supportive we? everybody is. I know everyone's yeah. congratulating yeah. Judy. Love it. So and now everyone can get it by paying seventy five dollars. Everyone month. else can get it at seventy five dollars <laughs> a month. And when you think about group coaching, I know Jason. I don't know if you've done group coaching. Mm -hmm. I know you do individual. Seventy five dollars for a person for group coaching is crazy oh, uh, wow. deal. So trust me, just research this if you if you aren't sure. So the last thing I need you all to do, and thank you for hanging in there. This is the first time we've done this. <laughs> This is the first time. What are they saying? Somebody mean said, Judy, how about eight rolls of toilet paper for that <laughs> win? <laughs> We've I got people bargaining toilet paper for coaching. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. I don't know what's happening outside, but it's big. Um, so nice. we would like for you to take our event survey. We've got the link on the screen, but what's going to happen is after the event's over, everyone who has signed up is going to get a thank you email. And in that email is going to be a link to the survey. Listen, this is the first time we've ever done something like this, but we really want your feedback because we may be doing this more in the future and we want to know how we can improve. And um, we want to, with our partner, Platinum TDM, we want to know how they can improve as well so that we can continue to bring high quality events to you in this way. We don't know how long we're going to be doing it this way. So who knows? Impact Columbus may be like this. It may be a hybrid event where we're in person and virtual for those who, let's say we're allowed to get together. Some people are not going to feel comfortable with that, and we want to have options, but we need your feedback. So please let us know by sending us your survey responses, and again, you'll get that in an email. So a final thank you. If we could pan to the, to the guests, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and panning to our guests so that everybody can say hello. Oh, you've got them. Okay, thank awesome. You. See, I can't even tell because I've got this camera here. Um, <laughs> thank you all, LaShondra, LC, Jason, for being here. And thank you to our guests for joining us for Leadership Forum 2020 yes, Leading Engagement. Thank you, thank you guys thank so you much. Thank, thank you. you for your this time. was amazing. Appreciate you. Thank you. Have a great day. This was awesome. Thank you.